Well, hello, my friends. Welcome to another exciting lecture on social learning theory. And in this one, we're going to discuss briefly the impact of life course development and, and how that may affect uh, one's social learning. Uh, I love this statement down here at the bottom. It's a statement that occurred to me many years ago. I was a young man. My grandfather, a beloved gentleman, was trying to explain to me what I had done wrong and what did I needed to do right. And he looked at me and he said, son, he said, I've been 16, but you have never been 60. I didn't know that he was such a specialist in life course development, but he knew what he was talking about. Of course, now I'm not 60 yet, but I'll tell you what, he's a lot smarter man than I thought he was when I was 16. Life course development theory holds that goals and objectives change as the individual grows older. Now, it is also founded upon the concept that all people pursue their ideal life. If you'll take just a moment and think about it, you probably are in pursuit of an ideal life right now. You have something that you want out of life, some goals, some objectives, and that's what you're pursuing. Now, the vision of the ideal life, according to life course development theory, they hold that the vision of the ideal life changes as the person transitions through life. The definition of the ideal life is uh, certainly shaped by circumstances that one encounters. These circumstances range from individual to global. I want you to think with me just a minute about the things that happen in life and about how your ideal vision changes. We're going to illustrate that in a moment. But have you ever, you ever had a good friend, and you may have done it yourself, who went through a divorce? Did that divorce change them? Did it, did it change their perception of what they wanted out of life? Have you ever dealt with death? You ever dealt with job loss? You, I mean, you just go down the list. A lot of those are individual things. We had entire generations of people shaped by global events. Uh, I'm certain your life has changed because of what happened in 911. Uh, World War II, for example, that generation was completely changed. The generation that left us a while back, and they moved on down the conveyor belt to the other side and crossed the river, uh, those that grew up during the Depression were shaped by the Depression. Individual circumstances and, and global circumstances may shape your uh, your vision of what the ideal life involves. But you're in pursuit of an ideal life, and according to uh, life course development theory, that vision of what the ideal life changes as you transition from the beginning and move down towards the end. Now let's illustrate this and take, uh, we could call this little Rusty here, a little dog. Here he is, an infant. His ideal life is, is pretty easily satisfied. He wants a good bottle, a clean diaper, and he wants some attention where everybody does what he says. Well, that really hadn't changed, but the, but the good bottle may have changed. And then, then little Rusty grows into his teen years. What is his ideal life about? Well, at 16, when my grandfather was giving me that lecture, my goals were, were pretty obvious. Uh, I, I, wanted, I wanted a fast car and, 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 a, girl, and a pretty girlfriend. That's what I was about, you know. Then, then as I entered into adulthood, my transition, my, my vision transitioned. Uh, suddenly I had a, a, a lovely, sweet wife, and I had a, a family of children, and, and my ideal life was about providing for them and caring for them. And, and now I've moved on up into these, uh, these late middle age years. Uh, I'm fixing to cross down, I I'm, mean, I'm down over in the valley, I'm certainly... Uh, closer to the other end than I am back to the beginning at this point, but my life goals are different today than they were even as a young adult. Uh, I enjoy my grandchildren. I enjoy my wife. I want to have a good and, and pleasant life. But life course theory teaches us that as we move through these stages from being little to bigger to bigger to bigger, our visions, our goals, and our objectives change for our lives. We are impacted by personal events. We are impacted by global events. And by every sort of inter inter event in between, we are engaged in the process of life. And as we transition through life, 
uh, the events of life shape our goals and objectives to modify what we see as the ideal life and then certainly to change our value system. Now, social learning theory again revolves around the process of knowledge acquisition and, and the learner observes the appropriate herd to determine behaviors appropriate to obtaining personal goals. The appropriate herd to, uh, to identify appropriate behaviors. Uh, first of all, you know, right now, I'm, I don't mind telling you, I'm 56, I'm headed downhill fast. Uh, when, I, when I look at the appropriate herd, for me, it is not a group of teenagers. Uh, matter of fact, I love keeping my grandkids, but it's not a group of little kids. I enjoy being with those who are like me, and those are the ones that, that I want to associate with, and uh, social learning theory on my behalf says that I'm observing the appropriate groups, and I'm trying to determine the appropriate behaviors that will help me in obtaining my personal goals, which certainly include my vision as I have developed of the perfect life at this stage in my life. Now, observations in social learning theory are said to modify behavior in two separate ways. They have an inhibitory effect. In other words, you see somebody do something and they get punished, then, then you really don't want to do that. Uh, I had a, a good friend many years ago, a boy, he was all crazy about investing in derivatives. Well, after he lost everything, I didn't want to invest in derivatives. I have a good friend who uh, told his wife what for. And after his wife got through with him, I've learned to say yes, ma'am, and no, ma'am. Certain behaviors that we observe inhibit us from following those pathways. Now, observations can also have a disinhibitory effect. In other words, an empower effect. If we empower us, if we see a behavior being punished, we don't want to do it. And if we see a behavior being rewarded, then we want to imitate that behavior. Social learning theory holds that learning will most likely occur if there is a close identification between the observer and the model. And the observer, observer for this to happen must also have a good deal of self-efficacy. This, this match is known as identification. In other words, uh, what these 16-year-olds uh, are doing out here, putting rings in their nose and bells on their fingers and all of that really doesn't impact me because I don't identify with them at that stage of life. The, one, the ones I identify are the friends my age and, and folks, you know, that are somewhat at the stage of life that I am. In order for uh, learning to occur, there are some things that are important. And, and the first of these is that you must identify with the model. You have to identify with the group. And then you need some, uh, some self-efficacy. In other words, you have to take charge of yourself. And this match is known as identification where you identify and you have appropriate self-efficacy to take charge. Identification allows the deserver to feel a one-to-one -one connection with the individual being imitated. That, that is very important. If I'm going to, to uh, model my behavior by observing someone, I need a one-to-one -one connection with the individual that I'm observing. And the observer must feel that he or she has the ability to follow through with the imitated action uh, have a, a dear friend that bought him this this really cool lime green uh, Mustang that was the car of his dreams. I like the car. The problem is, as my daddy used to say, I had uh, alligator eyes and a Tweety Bird pocketbook. Well, you know, if I if I want to model, I have to not only identify, but I must feel that I have the ability to bring that behavior to pass. That's what self-efficacy is all about. Now I'm going to share with you a diagram, a social learning theory diagram, and of course one of the main concepts is that of the innate person. The person is making the decision. This is about self-determination, not about external things acting on the person, but about the person making the decisions. There must be a behavior that is observed to be modeled and certainly we have the environment engaged in this. Now you might ask yourself, how do all these things interact? Well, the answer to that is, is kind of like what a doctor told me one time with our first child. 
back this back before you know they knew what it was and I said well do you think is this baby going to be a boy or a girl and he answered yes and it didn't suit me too well but he, he gave me a true answer now do do these things interact how do they yes they interact and the interaction is 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 reciprocal and it's it's extremely difficult to define the, the innate person observes the behavior. The behavior causes the innate person to observe it. The innate person uh, uh, is affected by the environment. The environment affects the person. The model behavior affects the environment. The environment affects the model behavior. Well, pretty complex, isn't it? But remember that as people travel through life, their ideal life changes, and that social learning theory is about observing those who are doing actions or promoting behaviors that will help me reach my ideal goal. That's what it's all about. I want to thank you again very much for your patronage and in the words of the old Trekkies, live long and prosper.